Hi, this is Mrs. Alexander, and this is your 4.23 narrated notes for the front load about electrocardiograms, or EKGs. Go back and remember that the heart has its own electrical system, and these systems, or these impulses in the heart, have three parts. The SA node, the AV node, and the Purgenji fibers. The SA node is the node that is between the vena cava and the right atria. The AV node is the node that's between the right atria and the right ventricle. And the Purkinje fibers travel down the septum around to the front of the ventricles. This cardiac conduction system is what an EKG measures. Remember, EKG or ECG, it's the same thing. It conducts or measures the electrical impulses that travel through the heart. It starts with the SA node, which is considered the natural heart pacemaker. This is what sets the pace, the tone, and the rhythm of the heart. Notice here in green that the SA node will send down an electrical current to both atria at the same time so that they can contract or squeeze at the same time. After the SA node squeezes the atrias, the AV node will receive the signal and it'll be its turn. It's delayed slightly so that way the atria will squeeze or contract before the ventricles will. The ventricles will contract as soon as the bundle of hiss in the Purkinje system signals the ventricles, the lower half of the heart, to squeeze. If you look to the right of the heart image, there is a little line that we call the PQRST wave. Notice that it's in alphabetical order. The first part of the wave, or the first hill, is P, because in the alphabetical order, P starts the alphabet. The P wave is shown in green. That is also shown where the SA node is in green. That's because the SA node, the contraction of the atria, is whenever the P wave is shown on an electrocardiogram. So when the SA node fires, normally, you should have a P wave. And that P wave, the, how big it is, we will have a chart that will tell you what the normal size and distance, the time it takes for this wave to show up. And you can predict and diagnose certain diseases having to do with the atria not contracting or the SA node misfiring by looking at that P wave and seeing if it's a normal P wave or not. Next comes the red part of the impulse or EKG. The red correlates to the AV node on, a, on the picture. So the AV node will receive the signal from the SA node. There's a slight pause or delay to allow the atria to squeeze before the ventricles. So the straight line that comes after the first peak or the P wave is known as when the AV pauses. That's when the AV node is signaled. Now we have the Purkinje system firing. That's shown in black. The Purkinje system will start at Q, go R and S. The QRS complex is when the ventricles are contracting. The QRS complex also has a specific size or time that it should take to fire. Depending on if that peak is delayed or too fast, depending on that can tell us if the ventricles are contracting correctly or not. The last part of the QRST complex is in light blue and that's the T wave. The T wave is when the heart relaxes, the ventricles will open up or dilate and allow blood to flow back into them. So the T wave, or the ending part of this complex, is considered the relaxation phase. P, Q, R, S is all contraction. T is relaxation, or repolarization. So to polarize means to contract, and to depolarize means to relax when it comes to this EKG system. Again, here's an overview of the heart, kind of showing where each one of the different impulses are. You're going to need to trace this on your paper um, that was given in class when it comes to where the SA node, the AV node, the bundle of Hiss, and the Purkinje fibers are. You'll need to know the sequence. So remember that the SA node fires before the AV node, and then the AV node is the, the pausing between when the SA node causes the, the atria to contract and when the Purkinje fibers cause the ventricles to contract. So note that the SA node is the pacemaker, and the AV node delays, and that the Purkinje fibers cause ventricular contraction. This current that passes through our body is the same as like electricity passing through skin. 
The current is measured with an electrocardiogram, so we can actually pick up these waves using a very simple um, sensor on the chest and, or on the wrists, which you will get to do in class. A EKG is usually a series of your contracting and relaxation phases of your heart, shown here across. We usually focus on one part of an EKG, so you look at the first small hill, known as the P, you look at the top R, and then you look for the next small hill following the top peak, which is the T. So that's the part we're going to really focus in on. With the software we use in class, we actually can click on a certain place on the EKG and drag our mouse over, and it'll tell us at the bottom of our software a little triangle, which is represented by delta or change, and that will tell us the change in time or how long it takes. If you drag from the beginning to P all the way to T, it'll tell you the entire time in seconds or decimals of a second how long it took for your heart to contract and relax. You'll use that technique in order to see based off of normal rates that a body should have and we'll look at different EKGs of our own and see if our hearts are firing correctly. Now remember when we do this in class it's not a diagnosis tool. If you feel like something is not normal then you need to go see your primary care doctor. So let's look at the first part of the EKG. The first hump is called the P wave. The P wave represents atrial or atrium contraction, squeezing. You measure the P wave from the beginning right before it starts to go up to the end right where it goes back down to where it originally had. The P, Q, and R, if you were to measure the P, Q, and R, you start at the beginning of the P and you drag it all the way over to the tip of the R. If you're looking for Q, R, S, you start at the bottom of Q, drag through the top of R and down to the bottom of S. So this will be very important to know, look at these blue branches when it comes to your lab and knowing what exactly to measure. You can compare that to the next one on the right and see if they're the same or if they're different when it comes to looking at different valve problems and timing of the heart. The QRS complex is whenever the ventricles are contracting. So notice that starting at Q, R and S is ventricle contraction. The T wave, again, is when the ventricles are relaxing or repolarizing. You will need to know each portion of this EKG and be able to tell me in multiple choice format what each one is based off their letter P, Q, R, S, or T, and what that actual part of the EKG is responsible for. So P through T is our systolic when it comes to measuring our blood pressure, and T through the next P, the beginning of the next contraction, is considered our diastolic, or our relaxation, our uh, phase in which our part is refilling with blood. So this is another diagram. This is the impulse of heart. You'll find this on your lab. This just represents the atria at the top and the ventricles at the bottom. It shows the impulses of the heart starts in the SA node, travels to the AV node. The AV node then signals down the septum through the Purgingi fibers and all the way back up the outside of the ventricles. It's the interior conduction system of the heart. Notice the arrows. Where the SA node is pointed to, it points down to the P wave. When the AV node is firing, that's the flat portion not pointed to here between the P and the R. When the ventricles are contracting, that's everything from Q, R, and S. And then this picture doesn't show the relaxation on the heart, but it, it, the relaxation phase is T up here. Or notice they call ventricular repolarization for relaxation when the heart is refilling with blood. So again, what do EKGs tell us? Well, they look for normal waves and impulses, but they also can talk to us about disorders. The abnormal slowing or brachycardia, or the abnormal speeding up, tachycardia, irregular rhythms of the heart, and sometimes people can have injury to the muscles and actual death of the muscle tissue without even knowing that it has occurred. A lot of the times people will complain of a tightening or stiffness in the chest. That's called angina. Or whenever death of muscle happens in the heart, we call that myocardial infarction, heart attacks. The length between the EKG waves, the P, Q, R, S, and T, tell us whether or not the impulses are actually following the normal guide. 
and you'll have a chart in your lab that'll tell you what the normal intervals are. So you'll need to look at long intervals revealing that it's taking longer, whereas shorter intervals revealing that it's um, taking a shorter route or there's some sort of uh, absent wave or there's some sort of misfiring happening in the electrical impulses. You will be asked on the test about these different diagnoses of EKGs, so be ready for that.